Okay, so let's talk about selection tools. So you have your finished graffiti piece, um, the photograph that you edited. Um, maybe it looks like this, okay? So how do we get this image onto this image? Well, one, we could select the image. So that would be Command A. That selects the whole thing. You see the little marching ants? That's what the, that's called. Command C to copy. You could also do edit, copy, right? Um, and then just go here to your background image and hit Command V and paste it on. Okay, I have graffiti on my background. Does that look good? No, not so much. Um, so you could, from this point, um, manipulate this selection of this image here to work um, like we could make it smaller so we could go to edit transform scale and hold the shift key down shift is very important if I don't I could go crazy and make it you know short and fat or tall and skinny and that won't look good so we want to make sure we hold the shift key down I can change the size of that artwork okay and it kind of fits in there, right? Um, I could also go to Edit, Transform, and click on Perspective, um, which is something we do need to do. And what I can do is follow the lines of the bricks. So I'm going to move this up so that this corner is on that grout line right there. And then drag this down so it's on the same grout line, right? It's not quite right here. So I'll go to transform perspective again. Oh, nope. Let me just do distort. Because I can just do the one side. Okay, so I'll do the bottom there and just kind of eyeball the bottom lining up right with the lines of the brick so that's going to give the illusion right that it's actually on there and it still doesn't look so good right so I could go um, above the layers palette there's um, a drop down menu you'll see it usually just says normal but these are different blend modes, so how the image blends with the layers below it. So I could try some of these. And then like, oh, I'll see the brick through it. But that doesn't look so great. Like we lose the image, right? So maybe lighten would be better. Mm, not really. Screen. Not really. Overlay. That's yeah, better. But see, like this is still... Because we selected the whole image, it's still affecting all of those bricks. So depending on your image, some of these might work better for you than others. Like this is probably the best for the words because it looks the most similar to the original artwork, right? If that's the original artwork, we have the teal, the blue, the purple, and when we see that coming through, you know, blending with the bricks, but then this becomes really funky because it's a background. So this is why selections are super duper important. So I'm going to leave this so we can compare um, our notes there. Just get rid of that for you. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go back to my original image. Now, you know, she took some time to do her background here and for this standalone piece that works out really well, right? Because it's a full finished piece, but for our purposes of adding this to a background, it doesn't really work out so hot. So let's talk about selection tools. So what we did first was Command A, which selects all of the image. So underneath this little move tool, we have some various selection tools, one of which is a shape selection tool or a marquee tool. Um, if you click and hold, you get a fly out menu. You have rectangles and ellipses and then also single rows of pixels, which I've never used but exists for some reason. We also have the lasso selection tool uh, underneath with polygonal lasso and magnetic. Um, the one tool I would recommend that most of you would probably find useful would be the magnetic lasso. So we're going to talk about that in a second. And then underneath that is also quick or magic wand. OK, 
okay? And those would also be useful to you. So I'm going to go here. Um, let's talk about the, the first two, uh, or the last two I mentioned, Magic Wand and Quick. So Magic Wand will select all pixels that are the same, you know, color, basically. So I'm going to select the background, not my graffiti, okay? I'm just going to click on the white spot. Okay, so this would work for this image because I have a lot of white. Like I didn't do anything in the background. And I didn't get to finish my bubbles here. So I'm going to just select the background. And you can see the marching ants here, but all of it's not selected. So if I go up here, or if I hold the shift key, or I can just click on the second one where it says add to selection, I can click. And I'm now selecting pretty much all of that background And then it's a pretty good start, okay? So if I zoom in, you'll see, you know, oh, I didn't get this, so let's get that background spot. Um, and it's not gonna be perfect, but it's a good start. And then I can click on my lasso tool, and this, I can just kind of draw random shapes to include in my selection. Okay. So what I'm doing is selecting everything but the actual graffiti. Okay. So I want to get rid of all of those little marching ants in places that are the background stuff. Okay. Everything I don't want. Okay. I'm going to switch back to magic wand and add in these little negative space in between my letters there. Okay, zoom in, command plus, so I can get this little skinny guy here. Okay. So if you zoom in, you can see it's not a clean selection, right? I have all this weird stuff around the edges of my lines, okay? So what I can do is go up to select the top and I can modify my selection by smoothing it out and expanding it a little bit. So this would help in the situation. So I'm going to expand, let's do three pixels. And you can see how those marching ants moved in. So that's a little too much. So I'm going to undo that. I'll go to select, modify, expand. I'll do like, let's try, let's just do one for now. And that helps. And then I'm going to smooth it as well. I'm just going to do one pixel as well for that. Okay, so now everything but my drawing is selected. I'm going to go to Select, Inverse. Now it changed and now my drawing is selected. I'm going to hit Command J. And what I've done now is I've isolated my artwork onto another layer where there's no background. It's just the artwork. Okay. Um, you can also, before you do that, while I'm here, select Save Selection. So if you, this is going to be important if you have a complicated image and you spent a lot of time doing your selection and maybe you can't get to that next step before or maybe you're only halfway done and the bell is about to ring, save what you've done. Save the selecting, okay? Um, because if you close out the file and open it the next day, that marquee is going to be gone. The marching ants are going to be gone. And then you got to start all over. Okay. So even if I was doing this and I got, you know, through my G and my R and it's, I still have a half an hour left in class, I'm still going to go to select save selection and I'm going to call it whatever. It doesn't matter what you call it. Graffiti is fine and hit okay. That way, when I save this file before I leave, it's saving what I have selected also. So I can go File, Save As, um, Peony. Let's save it in the same folder. And I made sure I'm saving it as a Photoshop document. Okay, so I'm going to close this out. Oh my God, all that work is gone. I'm gonna to go to File, Open Recent, Milky Graffiti 2. 
and it's open. Okay, I don't see my marquee, right? my selection, right? I don't see any marching ants. What do I do? Oh my gosh, all that work lost. No, go to select, load selection. I'm going to click on channel and go to graffiti and hit OK. And it's back. And now I can do stuff. OK, so now what I can do is hit Command C and select, uh, copy that selection. And now I can pop it in to this image. Okay. Well, I thought we got rid of those. I guess we didn't. Okay. Um, so again, what I can do is Command T or go to Edit, Transform, and I can hold Shift down, change the size of it. I can also oops, make that a little bit smaller. Um, accept edit transform and I can do distort or perspective depends on what works for you and zoom in so I can line this up on that on the brick there use the brick as a guideline that should be at the top here right so it's that line that's good I'm going to extend this out a little bit so it's sort of square with everything else. All right. And yeah, it's hard to see because we don't have that white background like we did before, but that works out pretty well. Okay. So there I have some artwork sprayed on the side of the school building. <laughs> okay. Um, so now, once you've done this, if you need to clean up anything on your selection, like I could go back into my magic wand and select these white areas that I thought we selected, but I don't know what happened there. I'm just kind of clicking around. And again, you can go to that select and modify, and I'm just going to smooth it out by one pixel and I can just hit delete and then it goes away okay um, should do the rest okay so let me get rid of this, and this. okay all right so now again we can play with blend modes Maybe multiply would work for this. Not really. Let's try overlay. Let's try. That looks pretty good. Vivid light, meh. Pinlet actually looks kind of cool, but you lose a little detail. Oh, that looks cool. It totally changes everything about it but maybe that would work better. So it's fun to just kind of play along, play around with some of these things. I think I liked that. So you can also duplicate the layer again and then kind of, um, you know, by having two of the same layers, the same blend modes, it makes it a little bit brighter. You know, you maybe would want to change it to a different blend mode and see what happens that way. You know, by combining all of that, actually that looks pretty good. So doing one in hard light and one in multiply, right? See how that kind of pops a little bit better? Um, alternatively, you can also, let's hit normal. So this is what it actually looks like. Maybe none of these blend modes work for you. Um, you can also just change the opacity. So you'll see the texture of the brick through a little bit. Um, but I would still recommend that you um, experiment with some of the, um, let's try, let's see those, nope. So we get the texture of the brick through, you know, but we still see our artwork, you know, so 
you guys again are going to have to play around and figure out the combination that works the best for you. So for me, this is working. I like how this looks. So multiply and hard light. And then, you know, maybe the order, you know, depends on what's on top. It will change what it looks like. Okay. So that's something to consider as well. Okay. I'm going to get rid of that. Um, okay. So I sort of started talking about selections, but now I'm also talking about uh, creating the actual composite image. Um, okay, so let's go back to this image. Let's talk more about some selection tools. So um, Magic Wand wouldn't really work for this image because nothing is really the same um, color. You know, like you could click in the black here, maybe. Let me do, okay. Uh, if you ever need to deselect anything, uh, Command D is the easiest way to do it. Um, so let's just click on Magic Wand and I'll click on the black and see what happens. Eh. Um, I can deselect contig contiguous um, and that will select everything, even if it's not touching. That's what that means. So it'll select all of the black pixels. But this is, doesn't really help us, right? So. Command D to deselect. So I'm going to go to um, Magnetic Lasso. And what this does, it kind of can restricts what you're selecting. So I can just click and it kind of senses like the boundary between the pixels. And the more often you click, the better of a selection you're going to get. But I'm just going to kind of go around and highlight around this image. And it kind of like forces my my, my cursor to stay where it needs to go. Okay. And I'm just going to go back to where I started. So now I have a selection. Okay. So I would make sure I click on add to selection. Um, and then that way I can just kind of keep clicking. So if you just kind of do section by section, it's a little bit easier. Um, I'm going to switch to the lasso tool just to show you. So the lasso tool, there's nothing restraining you, like nothing restricting you. So you can do this but like it depends on how steady you know your hand is and your cursor is and some of our desks are you know real bumpy and this might be tough like see how weird it gets um it could work for you it might work for you i don't really have the patience for that tool so uh you know only for like loose sloppy selections but we want these to be nice and clean so i'm going to click back on my magnetic lasso i'm going to go ahead and uh sort of time lapse this so you guys can see how that selection works and uh, for this, you do want to be zoomed in, um, you know, so you can really see what you're doing. Um, and this will give you guys the control that you need. And you can see, see how the cursor changes from a plus sign to a little circle? That'll close the selection. So there we go. Um, but yeah, if you just keep going along what you've drawn, it's going to give you the control that you need to do your selection. Okay. Okay, um, at this point, I've selected basically the outside edge. I had a few little mishaps, I think, over here and uh, sort of here. So I'm going to fix that before we move on. So you can use a variety of selection tools throughout this process. Um, actually, first, let me go ahead and add in these little guys. Um, you know, depending on what you're selecting, certain tools might be better for the job than others, and you can use a combination. So if I were you, as I was working on this, I would have continued to hit save selection throughout the process, you know, just in case um, anything happens. You don't want to lose all that work, especially if you're doing a tedious 
selection. And see, I'm adding these little circles to the selection, and they're not like connected, you know? And you can do that. It's just you see, this is a separate selection, it's just outside. So here, this got a little funky, so I'm going to go ahead and, you know, it's just because it's so light, so it's like not sensing the uh, border of the pixels. So maybe I'll switch to the lasso tool and just kind of fill that in myself. So that's good. Um, somewhere along over here, like here, um, there's a little white. You can actually click subtract from selection and I'll use my lasso tool and just smooth that out and get rid of that little doodad. And then here again, so click on add. And there we go. I'll end this too. I'll get this border part here done as well. So it, it helps to go back over your selection and make sure you didn't miss anything. Um, especially the edges are kind of important, you know, because that's where you're going to see the contrast between your drawing and uh, the photograph. So I'm just going to go back and check everything. And that looks pretty good. And I'm going to fix that in one second. So now... The inside part of my word is not selected. So right now I'm on just like that loose free draw lasso tool. So I can just carefully draw around it. And, you know, not too careful because I already spent my time on the outside edges. And add this. Oops. I don't like what I just did, so I'm going to undo it, edit undo. Be careful to not go over that little skinny part. And there you have that. And let me zoom in so I can get the control I need over here. It's just so skinny. Okay. And now that's added to the selection. And that looks pretty good. Okay, so I want to subtract this little white spot here. So I'm going to click on subtract from selection and I'll just draw carefully with my lasso tool um, so that that little skinny spot can stay background and that wasn't that clean, so I'm going to go ahead and try and fix that. That looks better. And also, the O here, so I'm going to actually switch to the magic wand tool and hit subtract and click inside there. And that should do it. Okay, there we have it. So our word is selected, the white spots in between are not selected, except for in here. Ooh. Missed those little guys. Okay, there we go. Okay, so again, select, um, I would save the selection, okay. Um, you can also go to Modify and uh, Smooth your selection. I'm going to do two pixels this time. Um, select, save selection, um, optimism. Okay, um, I can hit Command J and that will duplicate the selection I just made onto another layer and then I'll see it on the plain background and make sure it does look the way I want it to look. And that looks pretty good. Okay, so I can hit Command-A 
now and Command C and add it to my photograph. So this you'll see will look much better when I start to play with those blend modes um, because I don't have that white background interfering as we did here. So this is hard light and this is hard light. So it's the same blend modes, but this works out much better um, because we don't have the background, right? Um, let's see. I'm going to leave this on normal for now. I'm going to turn this layer off. Uh, move this down and um, there we go. Okay, so some things you can also do that are kind of fun is let's say maybe you want more of these little circles or maybe you want some paint splatters and you didn't do that in your original piece but you want it in your final digital piece. Um, one way to do that is to download some brushes. So you go on the internet, go to brusheasy.com, brusheasy.com, and you can type in various keywords like graffiti or spray paint, and then there's all these like really cool things that come up that look like drippy spray paint. So, I don't know. Find one you like. I'm going to try this one. Um, you want to make sure also that it's a um, standard license, not the premium, because that costs money. So these are free downloads. Um, you just click free download. Okay. And then you'll find the file in your downloads folder. Okay, so it's a zip there. Um, so you can either go click on downloads down here, or if it shows up in the bottom of your Chrome, you can click open. It will unzip it and open it. Double click on that file. And it's an ABR file. Just double click and it's going to install it into Photoshop automatically. So what I'm gonna do now is add brush splatters to the background. So we can see what that looks like. I'm going to add a solid color layer of white. And then I'm going to add another new layer, which is this little um, sort of rectangle with the folded up corner. Click on my brush tool. And I have a lot of like crazy brushes installed, but um, okay, so I guess this only comes with three brushes. So they're at the bottom here. And that's humongous. So I'm going to Make that a little bit smaller. And so right now I'm in the layer underneath my image. Okay. I'm going to change my color. Maybe I'll do something. I don't know. Should I do the actual color? So see if I hover over my image, I get this little eyedropper. So I can actually pick up the colors that were actually used in the piece. So, and then I can kind of modify it. Maybe I'll make it like lighter and brighter. And in the background now, I can have a paint splatter dripping out. Um, I could change the color, add another layer, another blank layer. Let's go to that pink color. Maybe I'll make it smaller, you know, oozing out from this corner here. Layer it a little bit. Um, I can change the opacity of the brush. So now I can put this pink and it'll sort of blend with that blue. Okay. Um, so there's some kind of fun things you can do that way uh, with some of those brushes. Let's see, do I have anything else that would work? Um, well, like something like this. If you wanted to add more, you know, bubbly type things. You could do that. So depending on the shape that you wanted to add to your uh, graffiti, you could add stars. You could add star dust. It could look sparkly. You could add snowflakes. You know, there, we'll add a snowflake, even though 
We're not optimistic for any more snow days, right? Um, so you can do that kind of stuff to it. I'm going to actually get rid of that. I don't like how that looks. Um, and then at this point, what you would do is um, hit Command J. What I just did was duplicate all of those layers after I selected them all. Command E to blend them. So if I turn these off, so now all of the paint splatters and the image are in one layer. I can hit Command A and Command C and then um, pop this in and the um, paint splatters come along with it. So when I change the blend mode, um, the paint splatters also are affected the same way. All right, so if I had tried to just add them into the background here, it wouldn't really work out because of the way the blend modes work. So you want to do that in your original piece. So here we can go like this, and we can go to um, Transform, Distort, and you know just use the lines that you have to change the shape. So if you if these lines line up with the orthogonals that you see in your picture, you'll know that the perspective is right. So there we have it. Okay. Um, so just to review, um, an image like this, you're going to probably want to use uh, under the lasso tool, magnetic lasso, and again that just kind of follows along, you know, the edges that Photoshop thinks are there, based on the difference in uh, pixels. If you're using an image that is, um, you know, mostly white in the background that you can just kind of clean up and, and do a selection of the white and then go to select and invert it, select inverse. You'll change uh, what's selected to the actual image. Um, you can go to select modify and smooth it or expand um, the selection. You can also go to select save selection. Okay, it's huge if you do that. Um, really important step. That way you don't have to redo things that you've done. Um, so saving the selection and then when the next time you open it, you just go to load selection and what you've done previously will be there. And then it's copying it and pasting it into your background image. So that would be command C is to copy. And um, you know, you can have multiple files open in Photoshop. It's just these little tabs here, you know, to get to the other image. Um, playing with the blend modes once you've copied and pasted that image in um, to get those different effects. You might want to do multiple layers and multiple blend modes and, and making sure that the image looks the best that it possibly can. Um, and that's the trick to it all is um, finding out what works for your image and for your artwork. Um, so at this point I have a bunch of layers, right? Um, so I would go to File, Save, okay? Because if we look, remember we save this as a Photoshop document. So if I just hit File, Save, it's gonna maintain those layers, maintain um, any saved selections we had or anything like that. File, Save. Um, and then when I'm all done, when I'm totally done, I can go to Layer, flatten image. Okay, so let me just explain this again really quickly what this means. So here, right, if I want to move optimism over and put it over here, okay, I can do that easily because it's in its own layer, right? Um, but I like it up here. So we're going to leave it there, okay? Now if I go to layer, flatten, or if I saved it as a JPEG, all these layers go away and now everything is just one layer. Okay, so if I want to move optimism, I can't anymore. I'm moving the whole layer, the whole image, it's all together. Okay, so we don't want to do that. Um, 
when I'm all done, when I'm totally happy with my image, I've done all my edits, I've done all my clone stamping, and I think my graffiti looks great on the side of the building or whatever I chose to put it on, then I can go to image, uh, layer, flatten image, and then go to file, save as. And you can, you know, add final, because this is the final version, you're totally done, and change it to JPEG, okay, and then hit save. Again, you have to go to format to change it to JPEG. You can't just change the file extension. It's not going to work. Um, and then hit save. And then this file format, the JPEG, is able to be uploaded to Artsonia. So then once you're done with all this, you'll pop this onto your online gallery. Little quick artist statement, just because this was a totally different process, what we learned. Um, we used pre-existing artwork, right? But um, we did some digital stuff with it. So um, that is uh, how to put your graffiti on the side of a building uh, without getting arrested. Okay, so uh, thanks for watching. Um, I know this is going to be outside some of your comfort zones um, because we've been doing mostly just, you know, art with, you know, paint and colored pencils and stuff like that. But um, once you learn some of these Photoshop tricks, you can Photoshop your head onto anyone's body, which is kind of fun. So anyway, uh, have fun with this. I do encourage you guys to explore different things in Photoshop. Um, whenever something terrible happens, edit undo or edit step backward is like your best friend. Um, you know, and then you can always just, uh, as long as you have the original file saved somewhere, you can always just go back all the way to, you know, point A and fix it from there. So really nothing is terrible. Uh, you know, everything can be saved and, um, I'm still discovering things in Photoshop. I've been using it since I was, you know, 16 years old myself and, um, there's new tools and new functions and new shortcuts and new tricks uh, coming out every day. So, you know, you might find something that works out really well for you. So I do encourage you guys to play around with some things too. Okay. Um, so thanks for watching and have fun with this.